Hey guys, so as you guys can tell from the title of the video and the thumbnail, I am pregnant. Yay! <laughs> it's so hard and so weird to say it out loud. I've honestly have been so scared to say it out loud, which is insane. Um, I feel like if I tell someone, I feel like I'm going to jinx it. And it's been really hard for me to say it. It's just like this is like a complete 180 versus my pregnancy with Riley when I was pregnant with Riley I told everyone so early I was like I feel like it was just because I was very naive because I got pregnant the first try it was just an easy breezy pregnancy and yeah I just um had no worries at all and I think after the miscarriage it just kind of put a lot in perspective for me of like what could happen and so I've been very scared throughout this pregnancy to even say it out loud because I'm like, oh my God, do I say it? Like, do I tell this person? Is it something gonna happen like right after it because I said something? Like it's like, I don't know, I guess that's my anxiety with it. Um, so definitely like this announcement is very different than what it was with Riley. Like I, we created this whole spectacular video and yeah, I just, I couldn't even think of a creative way to announce this one just because this pregnancy has already been very much a whirlwind. I am about to be nine weeks pregnant tomorrow and we've already been through like a scare and I'm gonna be talking a lot about it in my future videos. Like if my, cause I've been keeping updates each week. So I'm gonna be doing weekly updates that will be coming out consecutively on my Life and Maddie channel. Um, just talking about my pregnancy symptoms, what we went through that week. I had to do an ultrasound early at seven weeks for a threatened miscarriage. And the reason why was because I woke up with blood and we've, I'm just gonna like tell you guys right now why it was because of a cervical polyp. That is what they found when I had my ACG test. So it looks like I'm gonna have that for the rest of my pregnancy, which really sucks. So I've been very on edge with that. Then we had the attack and I was pregnant during that time and the bleeding happened at the end of that, like that weekend of that week. So I was really scared that I did something by trying to dive and stop this dog. So I've just been through so much anxiety with this pregnancy already. And I feel bad for my doctor and all the nurses because I'm just like, the second I found out I was pregnant, I was like, I need to go in. I need to have my HCG levels tested. I need to see my progestion. I need, I was just like, I don't care. You're ordering this blood test. So I did all that. So we like checked my blood on like a Monday and then we checked it again on a Wednesday and it showed that my levels were doubling, which was really good. And then when we did the ultrasound of the little one here, um, looks everything looks great like we have the yolk sac we have the fetal pole we have the fetus and it had a strong heart rate of 130 which was really good everything looked normal i didn't have any like one thing i was worried about was a sub chorionic hemorrhage i think that's how you say it um so i was worried that that was causing the bleeding at all because i was like because the bleeding like kind of just stopped but then we found out that it was that cervical polyp that just gets agitated very easily. So I'll talk all about that more in depth in a future video of like the week when that actually went down. But I just wanna let you guys know everything is fine. So I go in for another doctor's appointment on Friday this week <laughs> and yeah, I'm already like kind of out of breath right now. This pregnancy just like with everything, like I did not think I was going to be pregnant this cycle. I was like all just like kind of prepping for the next cycle. I was like, you know what? I'll just do a line progression test and just like, you know, you know, test my HCG levels and I'll have everything like planned out for my ovulation and then and so on for the next month. But I was like, I'll just give myself some practice this month. So I started taking these tests and <laughs> I just didn't think anything of it. And so I kind of put them to the side and then I went back at the end of the night and I was like, you know, organizing everything. And I was like, is that a second line? I was so kind of just like, wait a second. I think that's a second line. It was crazy because I didn't see any second line when I took the test, but I don't think I waited long enough. And since I put them in this book, I went back and looked at it last night and I was like, oh my God, I think there's a second line. And I've been taking them since 6 DPO. I went ahead and peed on another one. And then I also did a first response stick. And today is just gonna be the 10 DPO. I'm not gonna get my hopes up because it really sucks when it doesn't work out, but. I figured, you know what, let's just go ahead and see. So let's look at this one first. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. 
There's a second line. There, it's so faint. This had it been the H, uh, SG test. I did this in like not even expecting to be pregnant. Like I was just like, there's just no way. Uh, we did it so late. Um, so basically I had my HSG test, as you guys know, from that week, right? And the HSG test is supposed to improve your fertility by 25%. Well, from being told that like my eggs are probably not the best and that my ovarian reserve is declining, I was like, an HSG test is not going to help improve my chances because it's my egg. So I'm obviously going to have problems then. So we baby danced that weekend and it was like very late notice. Like I was like, there's probably like, we might've been too late for this. Um, and so just kind of like waited like the, like the next two weeks. And once you really start to look for those signs of when you're ovulating, like I felt like I even knew I was like, I ovulated from my left side and it was funny because I did my ultrasound and she's like, you ovulated from your left ovary. And I'm like, I knew it. I remember that little cramp that I was getting right there. And like you just start, like once you know those signs to look for, you really start to notice, okay, this is the day I actually ovulated. So, um, and you feel all the symptoms and stuff, which is why I was like, okay, I know that my tests are telling me I'm ovulating. And I go, I was feeling like I was ovulating too. Like I was getting the symptoms. So that's why I was like, I knew I was making an egg. It was just, yeah. So craziness there. Um, did not even expect it. Uh, I actually started like even charting my symptoms before my BFP of like that were definitely signs that like you most likely are pregnant right now. Um, I just did not believe it. Like I just was not like taking it. I was just like, no, I'm not going to get my hopes up. This cannot be it, but I'll chart it down just in case. And I did a whole video on that too already that I filmed. So I will have that up for you guys very soon. But basically I was just like the one big thing that was kind of giving it to me, like there was two things I'll just tell you right now is insomnia. I got, I get insomnia really bad when I'm pregnant. I got it really bad with Riley. I did not sleep the entire pregnancy from like the first week before finding out that I had a positive pregnancy test. And it was the same thing with this little one. That was one big sign right there. And then also my second sign was I was getting really, really hungry at night. Like I would put Riley down for bed, I would go wash my face, sit down in bed, work on my computer, and I was getting so hungry. And I don't ever get hungry at night. Like I eat dinner, we might eat a little dessert afterwards, and that's it. Like if anything, I'll eat like a little thing of fruit or something. Um, but I was getting, I was becoming so starved. And that's when you guys probably started seeing my Instagram post of my fruit with my tahini, because I was like, I am not eating like anything that is unhealthy right now. I need to eat fruit and so I would just like make those little fruit dishes every single night <laughs> and that's what would kind of like help with my hunger and stuff. But those were like the two big symptoms that I noticed beforehand that I was like, there's a good chance I could be pregnant, but I was like, it's probably in my head. I'm probably psyching myself out. I'm not gonna get my hopes up. So it was weird. It was like once I was saying you are on the other side I was saying, don't get your hopes up. And so I just did the line progression test and saw those lines and I was blown away. I am so grateful and I'm just like, bring on the pregnancy symptoms, bring on the nausea, bring on the tiredness, bring on everything. I want to feel it because I want to know that my levels are okay. Those are signs that your levels are healthy. And that's like, it's just like, you know, completely night and day. I think like definitely going through a miscarriage has really put things in perspective of how grateful you should be when you do conceive. It's just been a whirlwind. I've been very, very tired. I went on Instagram because I'm like, I know I've been so MIA and I've just been so tired. I like try to work as much as I can and then at 12 I eat lunch and then I sleep. I have to take a nap. If I don't take a nap, I can't function for the rest of the day. So I, t I take a nap and then I pick Riley up from school. We do our thing, we make dinner and do our bedtime routine. So I've been doing all that and what's been a little harder on top of it is that Joel has, like his work has really picked up. So he's been gone for majority of the month. Like he's home maybe like He's been home maybe like five, six days out of the entire month. And that's been really rough. And then when going through my miscarriage scare, he wasn't there. So I told my mom, cause my mom actually knew I was pregnant the week I found out because we decided, cause I was like, we can't go to the river if I'm on my period. I was like, it's just not gonna happen. Well, we decided to go to the river last minute 
because I wasn't gonna start my period. So my mom was like, wait a second, why are you going? You're gonna be on your period, I know you. You won't leave your house for those first few days. And she, and she put two and two together. So <laughs> same thing with Joel's mom, put two and two together as well, because that was like our whole reason for not going and I've told, I'm open about it. Um, so they found out really early on and then with the miscarriage scare like my mom told my dad because she needed like help and stuff like that so they could help me with Riley and like my dad drove me to my appointment and everything because Joel was gone. So that's how a couple of the family members already found out. I mean it's not the most special way ever that I had in my head but I, I think that this pregnancy is just it's just gonna be its own thing and we're gonna make the best out of it so I've already come up with an idea of how I'm gonna tell my family I got Riley a shirt I first got her the shirt that it was like a friends logo and it says the one where I become a big sister but I think it's coming it's gaming coming from New Zealand or something like that or Australia so it's supposed to be here but I don't think it's gonna get here in time I ordered it a lot like almost a month ago, you guys. So I'm bummed about that, but I ordered another one on Amazon today that just says like big sister with a rainbow on it. And my whole idea was for my mom's birthday, because I knew the whole family would be there um, on Sunday, which is gonna be this Sunday. I'll have like a little video of it if I can get it. But basically I was like, I'm just gonna give Riley the ultrasound picture, let her walk into the house with it and hand it to like my sister or something because my sister is the one that does not fully know she guessed it but I've been lying and I've been saying no because I don't want her to know and I at least want to tell someone <laughs> I want to just tell someone in a special way so Ashley if you're watching this that is why I lied it's because I just wanted to at least be able to tell someone in a special way yeah so that is my plan if I get a clip of it I will put it in here all right can you go give it to Auntie Ashley We have something to give you. Hello? Oh! <laughs> oh, you knew it! Wait, where are you? Wait, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> this is pregnant with a boy. With a boy? Do you want to come? Pregnant. Yes! Oh are you being too shy right now? <laughs> You did not cooperate at all. <laughs> hey, Daffy. Hey, Hunter. Oh my God. Yeah. She, oh my she was God. supposed to give it to you. that I'm telling you guys on Instagram is just like this really cute like board thing that I saw and I was like oh you know what I'll get this stuff made and I think it was a really cute idea and it just says here comes the sun little darling rainbow appearing March 2021 so that is when we are due we are due about March 14th I believe um so yeah March baby um and I think it will be such a blessing in 2021 to start off the year in a good way because hell we know 2020 has been something it has been something anyways i just wanted to come on here and tell you guys and i definitely like think the hsg test is what helped us obviously i mean it took us months of trying and um the one thing i never really is like said i said it in a video but I think I cut it out just for like, you know, privacy reasons. But like people were wondering why we saw a fertility special so quickly. And we actually had a diagnosis of a potential infertility situation and ended up being not accurate, but that's what we were told at when I was actually eight months pregnant with Riley and we didn't think anything of it. And because I was pregnant and when we were told this, it was like, didn't make sense. And so it was just kind of always in the back of our head and then when we had the miscarriage and then when we were trying for a few months it was kind of like sticking in there like you know what this might be a prop like a problem we might have to get this reversed or something um to be able to conceive so we need to get this checked out and we already had an instant referral because of that diagnosis so i'm not going into that just because it's not my story to tell um but 
Yeah, so that was why we were sent to a fertility specialist so quickly. And I, I feel like it's like so good to see that there's so many good outcomes of seeing a fertility specialist. Like you see Desi's story, you see Shannon Rose's story, like they have such great um, ex like experiences with it. And with us, we did not, like for our situation, it was, I was basically told my only chance was basically IVF and that IUI was a very slim possibility and I ended up getting pregnant on my own just right after an HSG test. It was just, it just, with Joel and I, we got that gut, like we just got that feeling in our gut that it was very money driven and there was just like, that it was just like go to the most expensive thing. And we just did not have the best experience with it. And I definitely do want to share that so that way it can also like, you know, put like, okay, here are some red flags, like go with your gut. If you feel like that person, like that fertility specialist is not right for you, don't feel bad to just leave and find someone else. Um, that is a better fit for you. And that was our plan was we were gonna try for four months and if not, if that didn't happen, then I was gonna see a different fertility specialist that my OBGYN actually referred to me. He like was just like, he goes, honestly, when he saw me on Friday, he's like, he goes, I know you saw the fertility specialist. He goes, I know that they say things, but he goes, I really think that you are fine and you're gonna get pregnant on your own. Just give it a little bit. And he goes, I guarantee you, I will be seeing you very soon. And um, that just took a weight lifted off of me. Even after like telling him all my numbers and everything and then the fertility specialist saying something completely different to me. So he did give me a referral, but he that's what he told me. And I got pregnant. That is our journey. And we still have a very long journey to go and I'm excited. And I can't believe I'm finally saying it out loud and that people are going to know about it because it's like I've been trying to keep it in because I've been so scared. Like I've been so scared to even just say it to anyone because I'm just like, I feel like I'm gonna jinx it. But I'm like finally, like now that I saw that there was a healthy, you know, baby in there, ultrasound was great. Um, it definitely eased my mind and made me feel so much better. So yeah, that is basically my story of finding out I'm pregnant and of just like kind of like what we've been going through, like a quick little synopsis of everything that we kind of went through in the last nine weeks. There's gonna be definitely more in-depth videos for each week to kind of let you guys know what went on and symptoms wise and situation wise and all that. But yeah, that was everything. Like honestly, I didn't even tell Joel in a special way because I, literally saw the second line I was like I think I'm pregnant like I couldn't even keep it in I was just like I think I'm pregnant I go I don't know and then I just took so many tests and he's like he goes like even when we were at the river I was still like hiding in there in the bathroom with like a little like I had like a little bag and I was just like taking tests there just to like see and he's just like how many tests are you going to take and I'm like I don't know I just I, and I only took one test with Riley. Oh wait, no, I took three tests with her because Joel wanted me to take two more, but I only wanted to take one. So it was just like, it's just such a crazy how every pregnancy is so different. This pregnancy is definitely feeling very, very similar to Riley's. Like my face is breaking out like crazy. I can finally talk about that now because I am with like, like also like just cystic acne in the most weirdest places. Um, and so my face was breaking out from it. I've had horrible insomnia. I've been extremely tired. Like I can't function. It's been very, very similar to hers. And then the nausea is finally hitting. Um, I'm a, again, I'm almost nine weeks. So this, it was about the same time that it hit with Riley from when I was looking at my old videos. I said around eight weeks is when the nausea hit. And last night I threw up after we ate dinner, I felt so sick. That was already a lot earlier than Riley. With Riley, I only threw up a couple times with her, like a few times, and it wasn't until later on. So that was like definitely a difference there, but it's felt very close to the same type of pregnancy that I did with Riley. And then also I feel like my bloatedness and my tummy, I feel like I'm already showing, like I can't fit in some of my um, shorts already just because my stomach is definitely pushed out a lot more so I can't even begin to buckle them up uh, because it just hurts and yeah so I've just definitely noticed that I've already felt the ligament pain I've already it's just crazy like I feel like things definitely are progressing faster in this pregnancy than what I felt like with Riley did with Riley I felt like 
I didn't really pop out with her until 20 weeks, which was insane. Like when I went in for my ultrasound at 17 weeks to find out the gender, it literally just looked like a little pooch. Like it looked like what I do look like right now. Like I look like what I did at 17 weeks pregnant. <laughs> um, so it's definitely like, I feel like my body is definitely progressing faster, but that is because our bodies remember they're used, they were already stretched out. They just already remember what to do. So things progress faster in that sense. And it's crazy right now. Anyway, so we are just so excited and I'm so excited that I can finally share it with you guys and I feel comfortable sharing it with you guys. Um, I thought about waiting until 12 weeks, but I mean, the fact that we've already gotten the healthy ultrasounds and everything, that really put my mind at ease. So um, yeah, anyways, um, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you for just being on this journey with me and just all your support of like, I still get emails, I still get DMs about everything and like you guys sharing your stories and stuff and like giving me hope and it just, you guys are amazing and thank you. And I cannot wait to hold this little one in my arms. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to see Riley be a big sister. I definitely have a feeling I already know how it's gonna go. She's gonna be one, a very good helper but two, she's definitely going to get jealous because she gets jealous with Caspi already. Like if Caspi's on my lap or if I say, Caspi, come here, let's sit on my lap, she instantly runs to me and goes there and it's just like, no. So I definitely know there's gonna be a little bit of jealousy there, which I think is definitely like a showing, like it's, it's definitely, we need a sibling for her just so that way she can get a balance there. She's definitely going to be a really good big sister and I can't wait. I can't wait to see it and I'm just so excited. So thank you guys so much for following along and being a part of our journey and just sending so much supportive messages and stuff. It really means the world to me. And I will see you guys in my update videos. So I'll see you guys there. Bye.